Hi everyone. Okay. Uh, this is a really big room, so if you guys want to come up, please do. Uh, so it's a little bit intimidating to see this big room. Uh, my name is Dims, uh, and my co-conspirator is Swapnil. Uh, I work on things like NOAA, Oslo. I was a PTL for Oslo. I'm on the technical committee. I mainly help out this time with uh, the release management team, uh, trying to figure out how to make uh, the re releases automated. And if you see all the 100 emails come to your OpenStack dev, OpenStack announce, that's us. Um, as part of the release team, we were also taking care of uh, the requirements changes that were happening in all the projects. So how many of you have had trouble with Python packages installing? OK, one, two, three. So if you're thinking this is about getting your requirements into OpenStack, wrong session. <laughs> so this is just about Python packages. Uh, and you know the versioning and the problems with the co-installability and things like that. So uh, heads up before we start. Go ahead. OK, so uh, we are going to go through. <laughs> See, I got you. <laughs> OK, so uh, we're going to talk about what the problems are typically uh, in an OpenStack environment. How do we end up with uh, version, version class conflicts? And how do we get out of version conflicts? How do we make sure that over a period of time, um, you know, all of us are not struggling, trying to merge code here and there, trying to, especially people like uh, Zigo, who, uh, who has to package uh, Debian packages. So we, yeah, and Corey, Corey, right? Yeah, Corey, who has to package, uh, you know, Debian packages, and others doing RPM packages. How do we make their life a little bit simpler by coming up with strategies to manage the versions that need to be installed together? So we're going to go through what global requirements are, what we mean by upper constraints, and you know, a few other things uh, that you see on the slide. Go ahead. Okay, so. When we identified that the release team is taking care of a large set of tasks with respect to requirements, we said we need to split out the, a separate team, mainly consisting of people who are working with packaging stuff, but also anybody who else, whoever else is interested in taking care of uh, this hard problem. Uh, and the main thing that they were going to work with is what we call a global requirements.txt file, which is present in a repository right now called OpenStack slash requirements. Go ahead. So before we go into what global requirements.txt is, uh, it, typically if you open up a Python package, you would see uh, something like this. You can see, uh, event like what versions can be used, uh, what versions are not good, right? So if you see the line number eight, you can see that there is one version of eventlet which we don't like. And then we accept anything above that, right? And then LXML is BSD license. We can work with 2.3 and above. What this means is we may have a feature of LXML that we use, which is only available above 2.3, right? That's why we need a minimum of 2.3. Um, and then SQL Alchemy, we are uh, doing an upper range and the bottom range because uh, anything above that upper range, we know we, it's broken. We have a bug that is upstream that's waiting to be fixed. Uh, so you know things have to be tracked. Uh, so uh, this kind of gives you a sense of okay, if my operating system has these Python packages which fit within the range, then I'm okay. So then you have to go back to PyPy and figure out what is the set of packages that is there, what will install together, right? So that is essentially what we end up doing for all OpenStack projects. So typically uh, in requirements.txt, there is a test requirements.txt. Sometimes it's in the setup.cfg. 
depending on which uh, uh, you know Python package that you're looking at. Go ahead. Okay. So what do we mean? What are the files that we are taking care of in the requirements? It seems really simple. Uh, every project has requirements.txt. Uh, then how do we come up with a combined requirements.txt? So all the projects in OpenStack can be installed. So that's what we call the global requirements.txt. And we have to enforce what is in the global requirements.txt uh, to each of the individual projects. So that's the huge task that we are faced with. And one thing that helps uh, uh, the uh, uh, packagers is we calculate the upper constraints.txt um, based on what, is, what we can download from PyPy, what is in our mirrors. And so we come up with a list. If you look at the upper constraints, it's triple equal to sign, which means it's a pinned fixed version. So CouchDB, we always, in the CI tests, we are using 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, MySQL Python, if it's 2.7 Python version, then we are using 1.25, right? So we are publishing, essentially, um, the set of packages that we install in our CI, right? And if you go back to the global requirements, each of these will fit exactly into the global requirements. So global requirements can give you many answers, but this is one answer that we are actually testing. So that is, the, you know, that is exactly what we are doing. So now we have these two files. We don't want to manage it man manually. It's a huge task. For example, the upper constraint.txt, we can run some jobs to calculate it. Uh, and the global requirements.txt, we can run some jobs to publish that as reviews to each of the projects that want to adopt uh, the global requirements. Uh, anybody confused yet or not? It'll get even more confusing. So just raise your hands if you have a question, and we can, we can talk it through. So, uh, so there are two files. We need to manage the two files, and we have to distribute the information in the two files to all the projects. So that's the task at hand. And the team that is going to do this in an automated fashion and deal with exceptions is the requirements team. That's basically what we are talking about here. Go ahead. Okay, so different projects may have different version ranges. So, and also the order of the installs in the requirements file might break some stuff too. Um, so what used to happen previously was if you take say Python client library, Keystone client library, it used to be referenced by many projects and each of them had their own version. So depending there was random order in which uh, DevStack would end up installing stuff. Uh, the same pip li uh, Python library might be installed like five times. That used to happen in our CI. So we would never be able to figure out exactly what we tested uh, uh, unless we put a, you know, uh, we print out at the end of the CI run. But then all the CI runs would have totally different ones because of the random ordering uh, that, that got pulled down. So we could not publish that information, and that information was not useful to the uh, you know, the packagers. So that's a problem with the, uh, the CI. Um, then also, if when new projects are coming in, when projects are trying to do new stuff, like you know, somebody wanted to add Zookeeper, somebody wanted to do a different Python library for memcached and things like that. So. We, somebody has to ask the hard questions like, okay, is the license compatible? Uh, does it work in Python 3? Because we have a long-term goal of going to Python 3 as a whole community. Uh, are there other uh, libraries that other projects are already using? So we have to ask these questions uh, before we can let new libraries in, because we don't want to, this set of libraries to explode. Um, so, and the team that vets these questions is the requirements team again. Go ahead. Thank you. So new requirements are added by uh, you know, people like NOAA, uh, Neutron, uh, in Congress. Anybody can add new, uh, new things. Uh, they are welcome to open reviews in the OpenStack requirements repository. 
and come up with an answer for all, all the questions that we ask, you know, work with us, and try to get stuff in. Um, then we, when things break, we add things like you know, the pins, uh, we exclusions, and things like that. And we have a process where we, every night we calculate changes to upper constraints, we install stuff from PyPy, and then we calculate the changes that were done in upper constraints that are needed in upper constraints because somebody uh, uh, published a library on, say, a Friday night. <laughs> which typically happens. So, and then on Saturday the uh, morning, we'll have a review that says, look, MySQL uh, put out a new library. Or, you know, the eventlet had an update, a minor update. So, and then there is a review that's logged, and then the requirements team approves that, and that gets merged. So, so this is like, there is like a cyclical things that, ha that we have set up uh, that we end up monitoring all the time. Uh, when uh, sometimes on Sunday night or Monday morning, we'll see that all the CI jobs are broken, and then we go figure out, okay, somebody made a release over the weekend, and you know something is broken, so we go add uh, a pin by hand and exclusion by hand, and then you know we move on. So the other good thing about this is um, we one big a thing to protect us from breakage like that is the upper constraint. So if there's a new version of eventlet that breaks, uh, say, Neutron, then we fix the upper constraint. We don't fix the range. We fix the upper constraint. We let the CI uh, go, uh, you know, go. And then what we do is we work with the eventlet team to figure out if it's something that can be fixed easily. Uh, if it cannot be done in a few days, if we realize that it's going to take a really long time, then what we do is, okay, we go add a block on that specific version and tell them, look, we are not going to pick up any new versions, or we are going to say we're going to block on one specific version. So recently what happened was a library was already published, but they published a wheel for the library, and the wheel was breaking our CI jobs. So we went and did a, a exclusion, and then we cleaned up our mirrors, and then they deleted the wheel from their mirrors, and you know, everybody was happy. So we, sometimes we do global, so it's hard to do the global requirements change because if we do the global requirements change, then we end up changing everybody. If we make a change in the upper constraints, then only the CA jobs are affected and we don't push out a change to everybody when we know it's a temporary problem. So these are the kind of issues that we deal with on a daily basis and you know, we need your help. Uh, if you are interested in this kind of stuff, uh, you know, please talk to us. Um, so the bot proposes update to the subscribe pro projects. Okay, and also, so in this whole thing, it's not enough to keep adding stuff. We have to take stuff off too. Uh, for example, uh, Zigo is trying to get a Boto library off for a really long time. Uh, yeah. No. Well, there was. Okay. You have a set of libraries that you don't like, uh, that that are not well maintained. There's many more things doing the same thing, and we should choose one other project, mm -hmm. like Agro, Slack, and, and uh, Falcon. There you go. So uh, there is, we have a process of pruning the stuff from uh, requirements as well. So it, ne it involves identifying which projects needs to be removed, going and talking to their te the teams that are responsible for that project and make sure that they take it off their requirements and test requirements. Uh, and then when we know that it's all gone from all the projects, and then we can get it off it from global requirements and upper constraints. So also, uh, one more thing which you may or may not have appreciated was if uh, a thing in the global requirements adds new dependencies, uh, for example, one library starts, uh, has a new release that uses something else, something some more plugins or something like that. So the upper constraints is going to grow as well. So uh, the upper constraints grows based on uh, the global requirements and shrinks as well. OK, so this is just an example. So how does a project know whether, they, uh, whether um, 
you know, how to get into global requirements process, right? So the first thing is there is a check requirements job. A check requirements job is a well-known template uh, in the you know, project config repository, and you have to add the check requirements at the bottom. And if you don't have it, then you are not running the check requirements. What check requirements job does is if a random developer uh, who has no idea about the global uh, pro requirements process wants to suggest a change to add a new library or change a version or change the range, and they don't know what they are doing, this stops them by doing a minus one saying, okay, you are subscribed to global requirements uh, updates, but you know, you're doing something that you should not be doing. So, and then they get to know that, okay, we should, uh, the, the course will say, okay, look, check requirements is broken, so what you're doing is wrong, so go talk to the requirements people. So it gives you, uh, you know, uh, an alert when things happen like that. And also when the, when the Oslo team releases Oslo Utils 3.17.0, then uh, the global requirements uh, may be updated um, depending on if somebody feels that they need uh, the global requirements to be updated. Typically what happens is, uh, say, Glance or Neutron or some, someone else needs a feature in Oslo Utils that was not there in the previous version. Only then we let them update the lower uh, bound of the library. Uh, typically we say, do not raise the lower bound unless you absolutely need it. But what happens uh, typically is when, uh, when we release the library and Glance starts using it, because we are using upper constraints, they will fetch the new library as soon as it hits the upper constraints, and they don't realize that um, you know, the, uh, the global requirements is still using the lower bound. So that is, you know, that is one of the holes that we have right now. So it's a really complicated process, and we would like your help. Okay, go ahead. Okay, now I'll let uh, Swapnil talk a little bit about himself and uh, you know, talk uh, and continue the rest of it. Thanks, James. Hello, everyone. So I'm also part of the requirements team that we maintain the libraries. And I work at Red Hat and contribute to Cola. So that's all about me. So Dims explained us uh, very uh, informative in about how we do requirements, how we manage global requirements and upper constraints. And as a part of requirements team, we need to maintain global requirements and upper constraints. So how we do that? So maintenance basically happens in two ways. So there are board proposed updates and there are human interventions. So for board proposed updates, we update requirements project itself and the other projects that are managed by requirements. For requirements projects, we update the upper constraints automatically whenever a new library is released into PyPy. So Infra has the mirrors for PyPy, which picks up the uh, latest releases and updates the upper constraints and the dependencies. And once they are updated, uh, the re core review team of the requirements basically checks whether it passes uh, the cross-project integrations that we have. So can can just. Okay, so it will check whether it passes the cross-project integrations that we have for projects that are using upper constraints and as a sanity check, and then basically they will approve the upper constraints. And like Dim said, the global requirements change is very checked very strictly because it updates a whole lot of projects in OpenStack uh, ecosystem. So we check whether it's absolutely necessary and then we update it. Then the board basically triggers a change to all the projects that are using that global requirement and uh, update it kind of. And the management of basically updating the test requirements and requirements is up to the core review team of the particular project. So can you just move Go up? back? So if you check, so we have uh, taken care of both the things for bot and human interventions. And uh, basically, for global requirements, 
for we have some constraints for global requirements as well as for upper constraints. So for upper constraints, we only accept board proposed changes. We do not entertain human intervention unless until it is absolutely necessary. While when it is breaking stuff, like Dim said that some projects get it from in the gates directly when it is updated from PyPy. And if it breaks stuff, then we need to go and change the upper constraint for that. Okay. Next. Yeah. One more. One more. Yeah. So how do I subscribe to global requirements process? So one of the things that we need to do is whenever I have a new project, I need to check what requirements I need. And I need to check what requirements I do have into, into global requirements. If I have all the requirements, then I can directly go and submit a check requirements job uh, change into the project config and see how it uh, and sync the versions in my requirements file, whether they work correctly. Once the uh, project config change has been merged, then you can submit a change to project.txt to update your project and the bot will then trigger the changes for requirements into your projects. So you just need to, need to monitor the board proposed changes into your project and uh, basically approve them. Next. So add in uh, and upgrading requirements. So basically uh, we get a lot of trouble when people want to add new libraries. So we have a strict requirement that adheres to a set of questionnaires that needs to be fulfilled and needs, uh, basically core team needs to be in ag agreement that we need this new library. Because uh, whenever new project starts or people see new libraries, they tend to pick it up, implement the new features and they want that it to be part of global requirements. But we might have a library that is doing the same thing. Or, uh, it might not be compatible license that we expect it from, or it might not be Python 3 compatible, or distros may have an alternate option for that. So we need to check all these things into consideration before we approve any new library into the requirements. So we are very strict on that purpose while adding it, because it creates a new uh, maintenance job for the requirements team as well as the release team when we are releasing new things for OpenStack. Same goes with upgrading requirement version. So uh, we are very strict on upgrading global requirements because anything changes into the, it affects all OpenStack ecosystem and you need to be very sure that I need to update it. So the update process basically is followed in a, uh, multiple formats. So for OpenStack libraries, the release team basically takes care of updating the requirements into global requirements for OpenStack projects. Uh, for dependencies that are managed by projects themselves, so they know that I need a new dependency for this particular library, they submit a new change into the requirements repo for updating that global requirement. And sometimes uh, a distro specific library, which basically is added as a part of uh, dependency management into upper constraints. If they need any change into it and they need to add or update into global requirements, they submit a change into requirements. So this way we manage upgrading the requirements into uh, requirements repo. And like we discussed, the upper constraint changes are very specific. They are 100% or 99% we can say are managed only by board proposed changes and no human intervention as long as it's not necessary. Okay. So as a part of this uh, basically presentation, I want to basically uh, ask uh, as many people they want to review and provide help to requirements team to review the new requirements or upgrades. So because we need feedback or uh, basically uh, when we break any requirement. We need early feedback from as many users as we want. And this basically helps to reduce the uh, CI, uh, the 
uh, efforts that we lose in CI for uh, breakages that we can reduce by uh, knowing those early things. Then, uh, as a part, because as a part of uh, adding new requirements, why we need uh, all those questionnaires? Because we need to know who is maintaining that requirement. If nobody is maintaining it, then we get into trouble too many times rather than recovering from it. So that's why we need to know who is the maintainer and when we know, then he can basically uh, come around and uh, put it to a minimum version or block it kind of that way. So that we know the damage early rather than knowing it later. Whenever we are doing uh, any changes into requirements, we appreciate to have as, may, as detailed commit message as possible so that we can evaluate the uh, change appropriately. And if you are not sure about your requirement and it's very specific, so uh, it's very volatile, so we have blacklisted requirements. Uh, so we don't recommend you adding into it, but uh, there are things which change very much uh, to project specific. So uh, those are added into blacklist requirements like Pepet, uh, Flaket. So uh, every project have their own changes or rules for that matter. And they add it into, uh, basically requirements team add them into blacklist and they are ignored when we are uh, basically changing the, con checking the constraints. So as a part of Newton, we have accomplished a very good uh, review thing. So it's very diverse and uh, it's around more than 2,600 reviews in Newton and more than 570 commits from complete community. And I really thank everyone for that. So another, uh, I, some of the accomplishments that we have done in Newton as we have uh, first time formed a team which is formal and which is continuously running the meetings uh, and working together as a group. So we formed the formal team. So Tony Brits is our first PTL and uh, as elected PTL. Then we have active core review team which works uh, every day to manage things. One of the major things that we achieved in this cycle is cross-project integration. So uh, prior to uh, Newton, uh, we had DIMS proposed patches that we used to check for all the projects that were managing the upper constraints for any change that is done. Uh, due to infra-supported uh, facility that we can do a cross-project integration, now we have gates that check uh, for every upper constraint change, uh, the upper constraint for projects that are using it. And we are having now specific stakeholders who look into issues related to requirements update. So we can uh, ask for distro specific things like for uh, number it is not here, Corey is here. So we ask them specifically, do you want to add this requirement into global requirements? And they are very, uh, very much there to help us at that point. We are having better coordination with release engineering. And one of the things that we did is uh, removed most of the craft requirements that were not being used or were duplicate kind of that stuff. Some of the pitfalls we have observed during this release is uh, basically uh, like Dims explained, that peop, uh, people start using a feature that is just added to UC and uh, upper constant, and that is not added as a part of global requirement. So if a project is dependent on that project which is using UC, then it fails because of that. Uh, we don't deal with forks. So basically, there are some projects which are having forks with different features, and if uh, different projects want to use it differently, then it becomes a difficulty for requirements and release stream to manage that. We don't basically test the lower bounds. So similar to upper bounds, we need to check whether uh, lower bound for the requirement works perfectly while installing a project or using it. Then this is a very common problem, but we have dealt it a couple of times in this release that if 
uh, requirement fails, basically, it, if whenever we update a global requirement, it triggers a change for all the projects. And if we need to revert it, then we need a lot more cycles to basically CI cycles to get it into all the projects that have been affected. Then uh, larger set of jobs to basically prevent bad things going, going in. So we uh, ask more projects to start using upper constraints so that we uh, know what is failing and have a better uh, integration with projects. So if a project starts using upper constraints, then we can add a new job into requirements or in the same projects to check with upper constraints and get the results early than getting it later, kind of. Uh, so some of the current challenges that we have identified uh, at the end of the release is uh, basically remove the requirements with duplicates, uh, then remove the requirements without active maintenance, and find replacements if possible. So some of the things that as a community we have done, I think in the last couple of releases, that the important requirements that were not maintained, OpenStack community has taken the responsibility to maintain them. And uh, we are, as a part of requirements team, we are going to see how we can help with that. Then, like I said, advocate more project teams to use upper constraints, so it helps to uh, better check the sanity. And optimize the proposed changes. So. Uh, the way we propose changes to all the projects and uh, the board proposed changes, how we can uh, better optimize it. Kind of. So one of some of the priorities that we have in Akata is basically introduce lower bounds or the way we call it as divergent constraints and so that uh, we test uh, those into CI and reduce the proposed changes. So we have a session uh, on Thursday, I think 3.30, uh, design summit session for requirements, where we discuss all this thing uh, for divergent constraints. Uh, the, another thing that we are looking forward to is uh, Python 3 compatibility. So we are, uh, we are having a separate working group for Python 3, and we are, uh, at the same time, we are looking at the existing requirements which can be, uh, which are getting to Python 3 or how we can find replacements for that. And this is uh, always a point that better communication of failures and impact analysis so that we uh, have very, uh, we basically secure the uh, environment from complex binary changes, kind of like he said for event led and we had some form Oslo at, in, at that time. So how you can contribute. So we want as many people as to contribute to requirements. Uh, and we have a lot of contributors, uh, thankfully. So how we can uh, manage the global requirements for your projects your, by your own. You can contribute to reviews. So anyone who wants to contribute is always welcome. And more project integrations for upper constraints. Some of the resources uh, for requirements that you might want to have a look at. So we are on GitHub. Uh, you can contribute to get it reviews. So if you want to see what we are doing over the next couple of, or uh, over the cycle, then we have a to-dos list. We weekly meet on IRC on Wednesday. Uh, the timing will change a bit in this cycle, so it's around 11 UTC, and we are always available on OpenStack requirements IRC channel. So if you have any queries, feel free to drop by and ask. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Any questions, anyone? Any questions? Nope. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.